On October 1st, 1999, after a nearly year-long closure, the Imagination Pavilion at Epcot reopened its doors to an eager audience. The attraction formerly on display within its walls had been an inspiring foray into the many facets of creative ideas, unquestionably demonstrating that even the littlest sparks of imagination could blaze into monuments of amusement, progress, and possibility. That attraction at the time, 15 years old, admittedly needed refreshment, likely via a bit of refurbishment and perhaps a flurry of new technical effects, innovations that would have only enhanced the glowing experience already held within. And Epcot visitors were eager to see what new adventures Disney had managed to cook up for them. However, briefly, financing woes with Kodak, the attraction sponsor, would impede these expectations. And rather than fund a proper update to the experience, Kodak not wanting to relinquish its sponsorship and Disney not wanting to foot the total bill would together opt to tarnish the ride by steamrolling it into something completely different and cost efficient. What audiences found when they finally stepped back inside for a journey into imagination was a far cry from what they had experienced before. What had once been a vibrant and reaching voyage into the depths of imagination had been traded for quite literally an institution. The ride, now a short tour of a dark facility with stops in various science labs including color, gravity, and connections, or dimensions, stars? I don't know. The attraction concluded with a smattering of themed spotlights, and that was that. While there were bits of fun to be found in the new experience, its attempt to cram the endless boundaries of imagination into something that should be assessed and appraised rather than explored was a misfire. But more than anything, the heart of the attraction was gone, and its motivations felt cold. Journey into your imagination would be one of Walt Disney World's greatest blunders. It was immediately met with negative guest feedback, and as management rushed to clean up the mess, the ride would become notorious as one of Disney's shortest lasting attractions. On its own, Journey into Your Imagination is a serviceable attraction. It has its share of nifty special effects and dreamlike sequences, but it's missing something. A song, perhaps? A particular purple dragon? Yes. But what good are these ideas if we don't have something to collect them all? Something to hold them all together? A guide to demonstrate the potential we can achieve with and through them? The ride was missing something, yes. For the Dreamfinder was lost. <laughs> The original Journey into Imagination attraction would open during Epcot Center's inaugural year in March 1983. Like most of the experiences in Epcot, it was grand in objective, scope, and detail, paying homage to the many qualities of the imagination, a nearly 12-minute long excursion into the heart of all creation. It was a marvel of imagineering, full of incredible creative and technical achievements. There was nothing like it, and to this day, it is still fondly remembered for its innovations and inspirations. In a wide-ranging park that had many wondrous attractions, Journey into Imagination undeniably stood out. The experience began as we entered into those crystal pyramids and somewhat immediately into the loading platform where we would board our unique Omnimover ride cars. We turned into a clouded pastel corridor and there he was, the Dreamfinder, high-spirited and light-hearted, cheerfully bobbing in the sky with us aboard his Dreammobile, a magical, zephyr-like contraption. He sat in a zesty purple suit and bright red scarf and matching bushy beard, a tall top hat upon his head. His demeanor is odd, but inviting and lovable. He's an amalgamation of cheerfulness, novelty, and curiosity, equal parts Bert, Professor Marvel, and Santa Claus. And immediately we are introduced to his pursuit. Flights of fancy, searching the universe for sounds, colors, ideas, anything that sparks imagination. Through a brilliant and gigantic turntable effect, we are able to float along with the impressive Dreamfinder audio animatronic for a full three and a half minutes. It is here we are also introduced to the Dreamfinder's latest inspired creation, the figment of imagination, taking form via an innocently curious and endearing purple dragon. Together with the help of an iconic Sherman Brothers song, One Little Spark, we venture further into the tangible dream port, where we surely discover the vast capabilities our imaginations can produce and foster. The next several minutes of the attraction find us exploring through many distinct and expansive areas of the dream port, encountering four core, remarkable products of the imagination. Art, where we'd observe the power of visuals. Literature, where we'd observe the power of words and storytelling performance, where we'd observe the power of entertainment and science, 
where we'd observe newly imagined technical achievements and the power of discovery. Each space was filled with countless elements and impressive effects and amusing projections. There was something different, memorable, and imaginative to look at in every single direction. It was ambitious and extreme in constant pursuit to top itself. The attraction concluded in a grand finale of sorts, as under the Dreamfinder's insistence, we see multiple versions of Figment pursuing anything that his imagination can dream of. But this journey wasn't just for Figment. The Dreamfinder assures us as he emphasizes that imagination is something that belongs to all of us. There are vast thoughts and feelings that we can find within and without ourselves, and we can weave those remarkable components into whatever grand and miraculous thing we can dream. We create the spark. Perhaps the idea of the Imagination Pavilion seemed out of place in the Epcot Center. After all, the rest of the attractions in the park were dedicated to the hard facts of science and history, new and tangible technologies, and the celebration of true cultures and peoples. What place did something so abstract have at Epcot? The truth, as the Dreamfinder implores, is that imagination is at the heart of everything. It was no accident that the journey into Imagination Pavilion had a tall and ethereal presence over Future World. For without imagination, what are the achievements of the past? Without dreams of progress ahead, what can the future possibly be? Well, we are trying to show uh, kind of the arts and the softer side of, of, of the imagination uh, idea here in this pavilion. Uh, energy and transportation and communication stories are being told well in other parts of the project. And our goal was to kind of remind people that uh, without the arts, without somebody with a, willing to take a risk and have a new idea, you really don't have much of a future at all. Epcot was dedicated in the hope that it would entertain, inform, and inspire. And it's extremely reasonable to argue that Epcot itself wouldn't be here without the incredible dreams of one of the greatest dream finders of all time, Walt Disney. In fact, it could be argued that Epcot, in whatever form it was weaved within his imagination, was Walt Disney's greatest dream. Walt Disney throughout his entire life was an innovator. As a young boy, he developed a powerful imagination and a committed dedication to turn those dreams as he saw them into reality. Largely within the realm of entertainment, Walt Disney powered through different artful mediums, inviting audiences to participate in the magic themselves, forever changing how we interact with films, television, music, and yes, theme parks. And even to this day, over 50 years after his untimely passing, Walt Disney still manages to encourage others to dream dream in the way that he did, and to dream in the way that only you and I can. His final and biggest dream was that of a city, a place where humanity, through the sharing of imaginative ideas, could live, thrive, and progress together. While the Epcot we visit today is hardly similar to the one that Walt had originally envisioned, we are still hopefully guaranteed that unique inspiration and specific wonder that surely would have been present in that conceptual city. Walt Disney was a dream finder. He pulled figments into reality and created many wonderful things, and he did this by surrounding himself with other dreamers, teams of inspired people that were able to assist in the achievements of Walt's incredible visions by including their own particular flares and whimsy. By intention or not, in a place like Epcot, the Dreamfinder represents Walt Disney. But perhaps even more so, he represents the creators, the writers, the inventors, the engineers, the designers, the dreamers. The Imagineers. Imagineering, a term coined by Walt Disney, is the fusion of imagination and engineering. The effort of implementing creative ideas in a practical form. Everything we discover in Epcot and Walt Disney inspired theme parks is due to Imagineering. Journey into Imagination was the love letter to the creative process of Imagineering by Imagineering. The attraction was notably led by Imagineers Tony Baxter and Steve Kirk. The whole experience was a thesis and how-to on Imagineering, which observably is the literal fusion of art, storytelling, performance, and technology, and the undeniable but more recently overlooked principle that every detail matters. Imagineers are challenged to establish a theme, to propel a feeling, and to utilize every single thing within their wheelhouse to tell a commanding story. The Imagineers are professional dream finders. And the Dreamfinders are motivators, and their influence is at the heart of everything old and new. Epcot Center seemed to understand this as well because the Dreamfinder, as he was realized on the attraction, was meetable. Walking around with his figment where he could impact those even outside his pavilion. A physical extension of that imaginative Disney magic. Many of the memories of Epcot's earliest patrons are tied to their interactions with the Dreamfinder, an authentic mascot for Epcot 
creator and creation, a genuine perception of fun and lasting possibility. I'm left to assume that you do not dream alone. Who's your little purple Well, friend? this is actually something I dreamed up. This is my figment, and I'm very proud of you. It has been suggested that the figment seen in these interactions is actually a puppet, which would emphasize a meaningful point, that the figment is spiritless without the loving presence and guidance of the Dreamfinder. Within all of the lovable charm that Figment radiates, the Dreamfinder is behind it all. But all blatant aspects of Dreamfinding would fade away with the closure of the original Journey to Imagination in October 1998. As we can see, the second iteration of the Imagination ride initially sent a somewhat tone-deaf message that imagination is not something to be expanded and explored, but rather streamlined, compressed, and to the point. And then it dared to mock you, the writer, for your supposed lack of imagination. Well, as you can see, there's not much going on upstairs, imagination-wise. But that's just perfect for our experiments. It had eliminated the Dreamfinder, the Dragon, countless audio animatronics and set pieces, the impressive turntable introduction, the song, the heart, and so much more. The ride was now half the length and carried hardly any of the charm or inspiration of its version previous. Two years and one week was all that it took for Disney to realize their error and attempt to course correct it. But the ultimate damage had been done. The ride reopened less than a year later with a new take, now with the classic song and Purple Dragon forced back in. Debatably, Journey into Imagination with Figment is the worst iteration of the attraction, by far. Journey into Your Imagination was rough, but at least it didn't pretend to be something that it wasn't. The With Figment version would be a bland and sticky band-aid, an unworkable adjustment that would hardly bring any healing to the serious destruction that had already occurred. Its premise similar, a tour of the Imagination Institute, where the labs were now dedicated to the five senses. But as the ride carries on, we're not even given that much, as we only manage to go and visit three of them. A bit of art imitating life, perhaps, as we find our already hacked-up experience cut even shorter. This is a true Imagination Pavilion story. Of course, Journey into Imagination with Figment would see the return of familiar elements like the song and the dragon, but those elements would in actuality be the attraction's most egregious offenses. While Figment was back, he wasn't the same. Gone was the pure and childlike Figment, excited by the notion of imagining and eager to master it himself. In his place is Figment, a discovery gone awry, an obnoxious nuisance who seems to cause intentional mayhem wherever he goes. He's played harder for a comedy now, which is fine, but let's not pretend these interpretations are similar. Supposedly, the learned Dr. Channing is enlightened about imagination by the ride's conclusion, the lesson being that imagination should be explored and unconfined. You know, the same lesson that the Dreamfinder learned us at the very beginning of the original attraction. But due to the length of the new experience, that realization feels unearned. And obvious, considering the fact that he's literally the chairman of the Imagination Institute. And worst of all, Dreamfinder was still absent. Isn't it strange that perhaps the least imaginative pavilion in all of Epcot is the Imagination Pavilion? You know, Figment as an idea is great. He's a purple dragon and he likes to imagine what's not to like. But I must admit that his seeming popularity over the Dreamfinder these days perplexes me. Especially in his current state, I have to believe that the present appeal of Figment is certainly a holdover from his charisma in the original attraction. The lines stretch from one side of the park to around a lake to mm -hmm. the other. Here's the bucket I'm talking about. Okay. The original Figment by design was made with childish delight, and he carried a sense of wonder and joyful enthusiasm for everything that he was being shown. It is perhaps the best representation of ourselves when we're within the many creations of Walt Disney World. Perhaps our shared adoration is because we see ourselves in Figment. But without the Dreamfinder, the present Figment becomes stale. Without exploring imagination and finding new ideas, what is there to inspire us? Who can properly mind the thrills we face? And tangentially, in a way that leads us to the Epcot of today. An Epcot that opts for squeezing in established properties rather than nurturing new ideas or respecting dated but iconic attractions with care. Forcing in stories where they arguably should not fit. 
Disney is a business and I understand that. Frozen, Finding Nemo, Guardians, they all inspire business and if I squint, I can understand it. I love these imagined properties as much as the next person. There is a place for all of these experiences, but it isn't here. That is in danger! When you tell an artist to paint within the lines instead of giving them a blank canvas, you'll get something that isn't entirely unpleasant, but it isn't as satisfying either. Epcot should be the last place where boxing and creatives is acceptable. And the pioneering Dreamfinder appeared to herald that sentiment through his attraction in those early years, as Imagineers were able to echo Journey into Imagination's message throughout the entire park. And guests would leave Epcot Center moved and inspired by everything they had felt and seen during their time there, from start to finish. But these days in this park, it is clear that the Dreamfinders are being stifled, and we can see the steady decline of the overall park ideology ever since that original and symbolic inspirer was kicked out. Today, Journey into Imagination with Figment is over 20 years old and it still attracts the occasional guest. The space is often the subject of many musings about what could replace it someday. Inside Out? Hmm. Would Disney dare mess with Figment and what little shadows remain of that classic attraction? Popcorn doesn't sell itself, you know. Do they rework the current experience to bring the Dreamfinder back? I'm honestly not sure what the answer is. I don't know if the Dreamfinder should come back. Would he still work after all this time? While I argue he never should have left in the first place, do I disprove my own opinion by saying he should return exactly as he was? While his message was pure and important, is it worth falling back on an old-fashioned concept in an Epcot that should constantly be evolving? I don't know. Ultimately, I want something here that exhibits the spirit of imagination, the spirit of Epcot, the spirit of progress, and how working individually and together we can forge new ideas. Maybe that is the Dreamfinder. So I wonder, is the Dreamfinder a tired idea or an eternal one? And what of Dreamfinder and Figment? Do you fit into the family that includes Goofy and Pluto and Mickey and Snow White and Cinderella? Or are you truly a part? Are you the future? No, I'm uh, part of the same spirit, actually. I'm more of, of the original spirit. The same thing that led to them created me. And as I was there when they were created. Creation is important, and it's something to be celebrated. Like Epcot has taught us, our dreams are the catalyst for all of history and progress. Journey into Imagination was the perfect manifestation of that. It celebrated the making while honoring the maker. Journey into Imagination was not only a celebration of creators and dreamers, but a striking call to action for new creators and dreamers to take off themselves. And imaginably, the best way to have reached all of them was through the captivating encouragement of the Dreamfinder. Until next time, we'll see you in the happy place. Bye. Well, a dream never spoils, Figment, because every time you dream it, it becomes as new and fresh as the day it was born. <laughs> so keep dreaming your dreams out there. We'll keep them safe here until they come true. And they will. Bye-bye. <laughs> Say goodbye, Figment. Goodbye, Figment. <laughs>